Hey, hello everyone again. Um, today we're going to just use another literary device just to show you that, you know, when you do eventually take your regents, um, you know, they will give you suggestions to look for as far as literary devices, but there's not always one. So, you know, if you, you know, if you try to look for one and you don't see something, you know, keep looking for a different one or sometimes you'll see two and you'll have to go with the best option. So now we're just going to show that um, how we would have written the essay um, if we were using symbolism. So really all of this is the same. You can use um, you know, the same answers, um, again, in one or two sentences, what is the story is about, um, three ideas that you learned from the story, and then the central idea. So all of that can be used from the previous assignment. So now here we're just going to include the literary device that supports the central idea and we're going to use symbolism today. Symbolism is the use of an object to represent ideas or qualities. So you're going to highlight all the times you see the necklace used to develop the idea of symbolism in the story of the necklace. So we're looking to see like what does that necklace really represent to Madame Moiselle. So I'll do the first couple to get you started. She had no dresses, no jewels, nothing. And these were the only things she loved. She felt that was made for them alone. She wanted so much to charm, to be envied, to be desired and sought after. So here in yellow, I'm saying that nice dresses, jewels are the things that she loves. And for her, they symbolize charm and being sought after. It symbolizes happiness to her. Um, it's you know, I think it's just, um, it feels, it makes her feel that she's envied, she's desired. So that's what these nice things like a necklace would represent to her. She had a rich friend, a former school, schoolmate at the convent, whom she no longer wanted to visit because she suffered so much when she came home. For whole days afterwards, she would weep with sorrow, regret, despair, and misery. So again, just to, um, after you highlight, you might want to just write a note. Um, she suffers and she can't go home because she feels as if she doesn't have nice things and then she's not worthy, right? So these nice jewels represent her being, you know, having made it in life and being worthy of anyone seeing her. So the rest now you'll go and you'll highlight. Again, um, these are different paragraphs than the previous uh, exercise. So um, go through and highlight anything when you see anything to do with the necklace, and then you're going to just explain, you know, what that symbolism means to her. So all at once she found in a black satin box a superb diamond necklace, and her pulse beat faster with longing. Her hands trembled as she took it up. Clasping it around her throat, outside her high neck dress, she stood in ecstasy looking at her reflection. Then she asked hesitatingly, pleading, pleading, could I borrow that, just that, and nothing else? Why, of course. She threw her arms around her friend, kissed her warmly, and fled with her treasure. The day of the party arrived. Madame Loiselle was a success. She was the prettiest one there, fashionable, gracious, smiling, and wild with joy. All the men turned to look at her, asked her who she was, begged to be introduced. All the cabinet officials wanted to waltz with her. The minister took notice of her. She danced wildly with passion, drunk on pleasure, forgetting everything in the triumph of her beauty, in the glory of her success, in a sort of cloud of happiness, made up of all this respect, all this admiration, all these awakened desires of that sense of triumph that is so sweet to a woman's heart. He threw her over her shoulders the clothes he had brought for her to go outside in, the modest clothes of an ordinary life whose poverty contrasted sharply with the elegance of the ball dress. She felt this and wanted to run away so she wouldn't be noticed by other women who were wrapping themselves in expensive furs. Before the mirror, she let the wraps fall from her shoulders to see herself once again in all of her glory. Suddenly she gave a cry. The necklace was gone. Finally, all was paid back, everything, including the exorbitant rates of the loan sharks and accumulated compound interest. Mademoiselle Loyal, Loisel appeared an old woman now. She became heavy, rough, harsh, like one of the poor. Her hair untended, her skirts crooked, 
her hands red, her voice shrill. She even slapped water on her floors, on her floors and scrubbed them herself. But sometimes while her husband was at work, she would sit near the window and think of that long ago evening when, at the dance, she had been so beautiful and admired. She went toward her. Hello, Jean. The other, not recognizing her, showed astonishment at being spoken to so familiarly by this common person. She stammered, but Madame, I don't recognize, you must be mistaken. No, I'm Matilda Loisel. Her friend gave a cry. Oh, my poor Matilda, how you've changed. Yes, I've had a hard time since last seeing you and plenty of misfortune and all on account of you. Of me, how do you mean? Do you remember that diamond necklace you loaned me to wear to the dance at the ministry? Yes, but what about it? Well, I lost it. You lost it? but you returned it. I bought you another just like it, and we've been paying for it for 10 years now. You can imagine that wasn't easy for us who had nothing. Well, it's over now, and I'm glad of it. Madame Forcier stopped short. You mean to say you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine? Yes, you never noticed them. They were quite alike. And she smiled with proud and simple joy. Madame Forcier, quite, quite overcome, took both of her hands. Oh, my poor Matilda, mine is an imitation. Why, it was worth 500 francs at most. Okay, so um, on to a few different types of questions. Number six, what does the necklace symbolize for Mademoiselle Loisel? And then number seven, you can use these sentence starters to write your paragraphs about how symbolism contrib contributes to the central idea. So the short story, The Necklace, is about a woman who is not happy with her life or her social status. The central, of the, the central idea of the story is, fill in the blank, the author uses imagery to develop the central idea of, fill in the blank, by giving detailed images of what her life is like and what she really wants. Now, Passant begins by showing what is important to Mademoiselle, and then insert the quote here. So you're going to add what is important here, and then you're gonna put the quote to back this up. And then what does this symbolize for her? When Madame Boiselle sees the necklace at Madame Forestier's home, it immediately symbolizes blank. Insert the quote here again to back, back that up. And then this contributes to the central idea of blank. When Madame, Madame Loisel at is at the party, the necklace symbolizes blank, and then insert a quote again to back it up, and the symbolism it contributes to the central idea by showing blank. Lastly, when Mademoiselle Loisel loses the necklace and she becomes poor, this symbolizes, again, fill in the blank, insert quote here. In conclusion, the use of symbolism in the necklace shows how some people place value in objects and feel that they are more than they think they are. Without the object of symbol or symbolism, they are reduced to a mere peasant. So, okay, so you can always add more to each of the paragraphs. I'm just trying to start you out to give you an idea of where to go, like kind of like a like a like a backboard, just to kind of like help you to get the main ideas. But you can certainly always add more. Okay, we will go over this uh, once you submit it.